Yet, in a realm woven from the threads of cosmic tapestry, Selene moved with caution. The Aetherian realm was disorienting, a place of infinite skies that plunged abruptly into claustrophobic labyrinths. Waterfalls flowed upwards, blending seamlessly with stars that glowed like molten silver. In this twilight space between the past and the future, the imaginable and the unimaginable, Selene felt the weight of her quest and the desperate urgency that propelled her forward. The amulet of lunar wisdom lay heavy against her chest, glowing as if to remind her of the task at hand. Suddenly, her eyes fell upon a figure in the distance, a man, his silhouette barely discernible against the undulating darkness, yet familiar. Dorian, she called out, racing towards him, her voice tinged with a hope that she hadn't felt in what seemed like eternities. As the man turned, his features slowly becoming visible as Selene approached. It was Dorian, but not as she had last seen him. His eyes lacked the shadowed intensity that clung to his resurrected form, and his aura felt untangled from the twisted energies that Iris had summoned. Selene, he whispered, as if trying out the name, as if finding in it a lifeline back to something precious and lost. How? Why here? She embraced him, clinging to this fragment of her former life, her former love. I'm here for Valeria, to right the wrongs and restore the balance. Sir Valeria. Our daughter Dorian's voice trembled with emotion. I'm a fractured soul, Selene. One part of me rests here, untainted by the infernal curse, while the other part dances with demons in your world. Meanwhile, a mansion. In a setting far removed from the dreamlike landscapes of the Aetherian realm, Iris traced her fingers over Dorian's chest, the pentagram scar searing with a flickering glow. This Dorian looked at her with eyes as black as coal with a dark crimson iris eyes that had witnessed the birth and death of infernal stars. Do you love me, Iris? he asked, his voice laced with a cynical edge that made the question sound more like a challenge than an inquiry. Iris met his gaze unflinchingly. I love the power that you represent, the liberation from rules and judgments from gods and men. Ah, oh, love. An ever elusive, ever deceptive game, he replied, his smile more a sneer. The room seemed to close in on itself, walls contracting as though the very air shared it in their dark liaison. Their union, fueled by forbidden rituals and lauras, was a volatile concoction of desire and danger. Back in the Aetherian realm, Selene and Dorian walked side by side, the amulet guiding them through this maze of reality and illusion. Where does this path lead, Selene? Dorian asked, his voice tinged with an innocence that Selene had almost forgotten. To the Seraphim's Veil, Selene replied. It's said to hold the key to restoring balance to heal what's broken. Can it heal us? Heal me! Dorian's voice was almost childlike in its hopefulness. That's what I intend to find out, Selene said, her eyes locking onto his, her resolve fortified by the vulnerability she saw there. As they moved, the environment around them shifted and morphed, reflective of their inner turmoils and yearnings. For a moment, Selene saw a flicker of a homely kitchen, the laughter of Valeria filling the air, just as quickly. It changed to a desolate field, charred trees reaching out like skeletal hands. Another reflection, another possibility. Choices have consequences, Dorian muttered, almost as if reading her thoughts. In the earthly realm, Iris stood before an arcane altar. Flames flickered with another worldly light as she began an incantation the very essence of her being quivered, as if she were on the edge of diving into an abyss from which there would be no return. Do you really want to do this? Dorian asked, watching her intently. Want? No. Need? Yes, Iris replied. We have to solidify our place, solidify our power. And if the cost is the unraveling of the balance between realms? Iris paused, her eyes narrowing. Then let the realms be damned. In the Aetherian realm, Selene and Dorian finally reached the Seraphim's Veil, a celestial waterfall flowing with liquid light. Words etched in luminescent script appeared before them, floating in the air like motes of divine wisdom. A life for a life, they read, echoing the warning that had been imparted to Selene by the guardian spirit of the priesthood. Selene looked at Dorian, her eyes heavy with unsaid words, unsaid farewells. This realm had already revealed to her the dual nature of her once singular love, his humanity here, his monstrosity there. 
Could the seraphim's veil heal such a fractured soul? Her hand reached out to touch the waterfall, its light enveloping her like a cocoon, making her feel simultaneously lighter and heavier. For the first time, Celine wondered if she was making the right choice, whether the balance she sought would be the ruination or salvation of those she loved. Are you sure? Dorian asked, his eyes meeting hers one final time. No, Celine whispered, but I have to try. And with that, she stepped into the seraphim's veil, her form disintegrating into a thousand particles of light as she became one with the balance she so desperately sought to restore. She fused with the energies of the Aetherian realm. One thought consumed her. Was her sacrifice enough to tip the scales? As Selene's particles of light merged into the Seraphim's veil, they triggered a ripple that echoed through the Aetherian realm, resounding like a cosmic gong struck by the hand of fate. For a heartbeat that lasted an eternity, Selene felt omnipresent, connected to the sprawling web of existence, her consciousness expanding to touch the edges of cosmic laws and divine equations. She felt herself to be a part of everything and nothing a point of singularity and a field of infinite possibilities. Then, in a whisper of silence that roared like a tempest, a form reconstituted. She was back, standing beside the Seraphim's veil, back in her mortal coil, but fundamentally altered. Dorian looked at her, his eyes wide, as if seeing her for the first time. You did it, he said softly, the shock evident in his voice. Did I? she whispered her own voice tinged with uncertainty. A shiver traveled down Iris' spine, a disturbance that seemed to echo across dimensions. She glanced at the demonically empowered Dorian beside her. Something's changed, she said. Dorian's eyes flickered, momentarily replacing the Stygian black with a flash of celestial blue. Yes, he said, his voice betraying an emotion Iris couldn't quite place. Something or someone has tampered with the balance. We must act quickly then. Iris declared, her fingers already moving to summon another arcana, her mind cycling through incantations that would shield them from whatever ripple this change had created. In the Aetherian realm, the text before the Seraphim's veil shimmered anew. This time reading, the balance sways. The path now forks. Selene turned to Dorian. We have to go back now. I sense an urgency, a tipping point. Dorian nodded his eyes still wide with the immensity of what he just witnessed. How do we go back? Selene held up the amulet of lunar wisdom. It vibrated softly, as if in resonance with the decision they'd made. Through this, she said, hold on to me. As their fingers touched, the world around them shattered like glass, shards of reality piercing the fabric of the realm as they were catapulted back into their own world. Iris was in the middle of her incantation when the room quaked. The arcane symbols she had drawn began to bleed, as if weeping. She looked at Dorian, her eyes filled with a mixture of frustration and trepidation. What is happening? she asked, her voice strained. Dorian's eyes flared red, a terrifying sight that struck even Iris's hardened soul. The balance is being restored. He hissed, his voice now a blend of the demon and the man. You cannot stop it, and neither can I. Selene and Dorian reappeared in a world that was simultaneously familiar and unsettling. It was their world, but it felt as though the strings of reality had been tightened, tuned to a higher, tenser pitch. The first thing Selene noticed was the scent of flowers. They were standing in a field full of blossoms that looked eerily like the forget-me-nots that Valeria loved. Valeria, she muttered, the name escaping her lips like a prayer. Dorian looked at her his eyes brimming with emotions too complex to name. We have to find her, Selene. If the balance has been swayed, then we have to find our daughter. The amulet of lunar wisdom glowed softly against her chest, its light seeming to affirm their quest. Together, hand in hand, they set off to find their lost daughter, guided by an amulet, driven by love and haunted by the choices that had led them to this moment. As they walked, Selene felt the gravity of what they had done and what they had yet to do, hanging over them like an impending storm. For the first time, she felt both empowered and humbled by the forces they had set into motion, understanding now that even gods and demons were bound by the cosmic scales of balance and choice. With each step, the scale tipped ever so slightly, like the feather of a bird caught in a breeze, floating between heaven and earth, seeking a place to land. 
Celine and Dorian navigated through the field of blossoms. The amulet's light grew brighter with every step, pulling them towards an unknown destination. Just as Celine began to think they were nearing their goal, a shadow fell across their path. The light around them dimmed, as though the sun itself had been eclipsed. From the murk emerged a figure draped in a cloak of shifting darkness, its features barely discernible. Greetings, Celine, the figure sneered. The voice was deep and resonant, and it sliced through the air like a blade of obsidian. Samuel Dorian hissed, his eyes flickering momentarily. Samuel Celine echoed, her voice tinged with a mix of recognition and dread. The amulet against her chest pulsed as though in warning. To what do we owe the displeasure? Dorian asked, his own form subtly shifting, muscles tensing beneath his skin as though preparing for a battle. Simple courtesy visit, Samuel replied, drawing back his hood to reveal a visage of terrifying beauty. I thought I might intervene before you two complete your foolish quest and restore a balance that I have painstakingly tilted. You can't stop us, Celine said, her eyes flashing with defiant light. Oh, but I can try, Samuel said. Extending his hand, a surge of dark energy lashed out towards them. Instinctively, Celine raised the amulet. A shield of light erupted from it, deflecting Samuel's attack. But the effort drained her. She could feel her knees buckle under the strain. Dorian stepped in front of her, his own form glowing with a ferocious light. You will not touch her, he snarled. Samala looked momentarily surprised, then chuckled. Ah, how love makes even the mightiest weak. I shall leave you, for now. But know this, your journey will only lead to despair. With that, Samael vanished, melting into the shadows as though he had never been. It's back in their world. Iris and the demonically empowered Dorian stood in the center of a makeshift circle of arcane symbols and burning incense. Around them, cloaked figures chanted in an incomprehensible language, their voices creating a dissonant melody that seemed to crawl along the walls. Dorian's eyes were closed, his face etched with concentration. Iris looked at him, her demonic senses tingling with a mixture of curiosity and concern. Are you sure about this? She asked, knowing that the ritual was both powerful and perilous. Dorian's eyes flickered open, their black depths consuming the light. I have fragments within me that are discordant. If they are not purged, they will undo me, and everything we are trying to achieve. Iris looked at him, understanding the weight of his words. Then let us begin, she said, raising her arms to the sky as she chanted words older than time. The room shook as the ritual reached its climax. Dorian screamed, a guttural sound that seemed to come from the very depths of his being. The cloaked figures fell to their knees, their chanting reaching a feverish pitch. Then, with a burst of dark light, it was over. Dorian collapsed, his form reverting to that of a man, albeit one who looked as though he had been through hell and back. Iris rushed to his side, her eyes filled with a mixture of relief and something that resembled love. We did it, he whispered, his voice hoarse. Yes, Iris said, helping him to his feet. But at what cost? Dorian looked at her, his eyes now a blend of human and demon. A cost we had to pay, he said. Now, let's go stop my other self and Selene before they undo all our hard work. Iris nodded, her own eyes flaring with a renewed sense of purpose. As they left the circle, both were unaware of the tiny scale that had appeared in the room, its balance shifting ever so slightly as they stepped out into the world.